go. Hi, how are you? What's going on? Welcome to Daily Fuel. Welcome to the replay. My name is Bobby, and I am the host of this group, the Spiritual Artist Quantacy. Ah, uh, I missed yesterday, says Robin and Ray. I can't see your faces, but I see your names. What's going on? You know, that happens sometimes. The early ones, sometimes they don't show the faces. And there's Robin's face. No, Robin, you were second. Mikey is back in the saddle. What can I say? The guy, uh, Mikey, we wanted to know if you're on desktop. If you're using a desktop computer because uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the mobile people can't do it as fast as you. Anyway, uh, uh, forget you guys. Uh, replay people. Who cares about them? Uh, replay people, welcome to the replay. Uh, let me know that you're here in the replay. You can write hashtags, hashtag replay, hashtag I am in the replay, hashtag I missed the live and I am so sad that I am in the replay and now nobody will read my comments aloud at the end of Daily Fuel. That's a very long hashtag, don't do that one. Uh, anyway, so uh, anyway, enough of the replay people. If you're here live, then uh, do me a favor and start commenting like these guys are. And uh, if you're new to the group, either in the replay or, or, or live, if you're new to the group, um, there's a link at the top of this post the, for Ecamm to give Ecamm permission to let me see your face if you're here live and, uh, and commenting. So if you would like to join Daily Fuel Live and comment, uh, it would be nice if I could see who you are. Otherwise, all I see is Facebook user and, and, a, and, a, and a blank face, no face. So, all right, let us begin. How to people? How to people? Ah, oh, I was uh, yeah, so yesterday I posted a, a thing said, "Hey, uh, who's got ideas for daily fuel?" I post that every once in a while, usually about once a month or so, and just to get ideas because I I can't think of everything. And uh, and then I remembered that I had one going that I don't think I did everything for, and I saw I went back to that one and uh, and I saw one by Hector about having to uh, like you know go to shows or, or go out to places and like talk to people about his art and do one-on-one -on -one time in front of people and talk to them and and uh, and he's very introverted and he doesn't like it and uh, it kind of reminded me to uh, to do that because I forgot to do that one so I'm doing it today before I get to the new ones that people requested and and there's a lot of good ones on the new list so uh how do people, because we as artists, we like to make art and we like the process of making art, uh, but we don't always like the process of showing it to people, of finding people to show it to. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. There's, the, I, and, I, and I was uh, having a conversation with my friend Landon today about this, that, 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 uh, that I like to have a business that kind of runs itself so I could spend most of my time doing this. I like being in the group. I like the the exchange and the interaction. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, he is pretty much the opposite of me. He would like to figure out how to operate the machinery of, uh, of the marketing, of getting people into his world on automatic pilot so that he could spend all of his time uh, running the business part, doing the doing of the business. Neither one is better or worse than the other. Neither one is right. And neither one is wrong. Uh, it, it's really all about what you want. But as artists, we need people to see the work in order for it to be out in the world. You know, we don't need it. You could make things and put it in a box. And you're allowed to do that too. But assuming you want people to see it, or assuming you want to have a business related to your art or or a reputation or anything like that, we need people to say, "Hey, that's cool," and sign up to you know look at more stuff or listen to our music or come to our shows or see our performances or buy our stuff. Whatever the thing is that you do. So as introverts, sometimes we have to go out there and see people. And as extroverts, sometimes we can't. And that is uh, surprisingly equally annoying because uh, as I understood it, a lot of our extroverted friends were very upset when there were lockdowns and quarantines and stuff and we couldn't leave the house. And introverted people went, this is great. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere or see anybody. Man, this was made for me. Uh, so, so I have three things uh, to say about this, as usual, three. And um, so here they are. 
Um, number one is, and these are going, I'm going to touch upon being uh, an introvert and an extrovert in all three of these things. So it's kind of almost six things. Okay. So this is for everybody. But number one is to find the right venue. Okay. Uh, so, um, now you might be watching this saying, wait, Bobby, are you saying you're an introvert? You don't seem like an introvert to me. And the truth is that I'm, I call myself an introvert with extroverted tendencies. That's what I call myself. Um, I'm, I'm not really the extrovert that needs to be out with people. I am very happy to be all by myself uh, right here in my studio and just leave me the heck alone. Uh, I'm very happy to do that. However, I have over time learned to people better. <laughs> Um, and I found ways that make it work for me that I actually enjoy because as an introvert, it's kind of interesting that I would choose to be uh, a front man of a rock band or, uh, you know, a lead singer in a, in a band and, uh, you know, and put myself in these positions where I am a front and center face of something. It doesn't seem like the thing an introvert would do. So it's like, I like to be uh, alone, but I also like to be on stage because the interesting thing is that I find on stage, I'm alone. Nobody's on stage with me. <laughs> I'm alone. And, uh, and and that's true no matter how big the crowd is, right? Uh, even if I'm like in, in a venue singing or something like that, the crowd could be small or huge and it doesn't matter because on stage, it's just about me. In fact, if I, back in the day when I used to uh, perform Form with my band and everything like that if I didn't need a band and it could have just been me alone on the stage like not even those guys I would have done it because uh you know not that I didn't I didn't, I didn't mind being with them they were my friends but um you know I, I I'm not a stage sharer right I don't know if you're in other groups where like the host might be interviewing people all the time you don't see me interviewing people I don't have people on my you know I don't do zoom calls with like lots of different faces and meet uh, running conversations with different people. I don't do that because I don't share the stage. I am the lead singer. I am that that's how I do it. So I have I found my venue. And the way that I did this is uh, I realized when we used to go to shows I I didn't like talking a lot before shows. Uh, because number one, I didn't feel like it, uh, but number two, uh, because it would hurt my throat, and then I'd get up on stage, and now I had a sore throat from talking in this loud bar. For so I would just kind of sit in the corner by myself and sip some hot tea uh, to get ready for the show, and everybody kind of got the point that that was just how I prepared to go up on stage. After the show, I was very happy to mingle and talk to people. I'm not. I'm not shy, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not in a hurry to like just go out and. And, uh, and and do things around people. I'm very happy to be my, myself, but I'm also very happy uh, to be in crowds. It's I'm, I'm not, I don't have an aversion to it, you know, but I don't, I, I'm not always looking for it. So, uh, so there's that. So I would just say like, find your venue. And it was interesting to me that when I found this, doing these lives in my Facebook group, I, I get the same feeling, that same pumped up energy feeling that I used to get from singing on stage. And I was like, this is great and I can do it as often as I want because it's my group and I make up the rules and I'll do it every day. I don't care, you know, and then that's why I do it because I, it, it works for me, you know. Uh, now, an extroverted person could could really just find something where it, where you, you know, you're on stage all the time or you're mingling with people. But if you're if that's not you, you can be more of like a behind the scenes kind of person. There's no reason where even if you're at a gallery showing of your work or if you're at a, 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 a some kind of mart or something. I, I know Barbara has has a table set up places now. And, uh, you know, so some of you might be selling your stuff there. You don't have to get up on stage and talk to people if that's not your thing. You can have a spokesperson that does a lot of talking for you. You can find ways that kind of uh, that 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 kind of work for you. And and also the uh, well, this should have been a second one, but I put it in with the first one. Is you can set boundaries. You're allowed to do that. Like going back to me uh, at at shows. Like I would sit in the corner and sip my tea. Leave me the heck alone. I'm not here to entertain you yet. When I'm on stage, I'll entertain you. But now, I'm just a guy at a bar. Go away. <laughs> you know, and that's, and everybody kind of knew to just go away. And and I also had the other guys in the band who would do most of the mingling and stuff when, when I was preparing my voice for uh, singing. 
So, so there's that, you know, you could also set the boundaries in terms of like the number of people you'll talk to, you know, uh, set yourself up and be like, look, I'll talk to five people tonight, but I'm not talking to a thousand, you know, or the amount of time I'll go in there for an hour uh, and then I'm leaving and that's it, you know, so you're allowed to do this however you want. Uh, the second uh, idea is to, you can create a persona around your personality. There is no law that says if you want to be an artist with an audience that you have to actually interact with that audience as a one-on-one -on -one person. I do it the way that I do it because I like doing it this way. I actually enjoy being in the group and looking at everybody's posts and commenting on them and going through each picture and saying this one's my favorite or something like that. I like that. I like doing this. That's why I decided to do this, <laughs> you know? But if I didn't like doing this, then it would become a chore and it would be work and I would hate it or I would in, in, avoid it, you know? So if you really have like some introverted fear of talking with people, try not talking to people. What would happen if you were the artist that just was like, my art speaks for itself and I'm like this recluse that nobody even sees and I wear sunglasses and a fake beard or something. You know, like uh, why not turn up your, your personality trait to 11 and just really own it? And if you're the extrovert, then really own that and be really outgoing. Because the thing that struck me today is we're artists. People expect us to be a little bit eccentric to be a little bit out there to be a little over the top and weird so why not really own it and be it you know if if there's a certain flair to your art uh you can be the personality wise you're you're you, you could be the opposite of your art or you could be the embodiment of your art you know whatever your art is so I don't think that there are any rules that you have to go out and shake hands and, you know, we're not politicians. We don't, we don't need people to vote for us. We just need people to like our stuff and buy our stuff. And they'll do that if you're you. They won't do that if, if, if they feel like it's a chore for you to shake their hand and you're doing it anyway and it's like, uh, leave me alone. They're going to feel the energy disconnect and think you're rude. But if your thing is, I don't talk to people and that's that and this is my personality and I'm owning it and living it, they'll start to respect that and there will be a mysterious personality about you. So, I don't know, try that. You know? <laughs> that's what I think. And, and then finally... Whatever you have to do, set intentions. This is number three. Set intentions and also plan for afterwards. So set intentions before you go do a thing that you that isn't your thing and then plan for a recovery afterwards. So if you are selling it in a gallery or something and you're expected to talk um, or shake hands or, or do things that you're not really comfortable doing, then set an intention beforehand that, you know, no one's gonna set me on fire, I'm okay. And afterwards, uh, as a reward for this, I'm giving myself the day off tomorrow, or I'm going to just uh, have an alone weekend, or something like that, something to look forward to, or, you know, I'm getting out of here and I'm just going to sit in a black room with, with no sound. Whatever it is for you, I'm gonna meditate for 10 hours. I'm going to have an ice cream cone. It doesn't matter what it is. It's got to be something that kind of makes it worth it for you. If, if you're not up to that point yet where you can just own that persona and you have to still do things you don't like to do, set the intention before you do it that I can do this and afterwards I get this reward. So let me see uh, who we got. Hi. <laughs> let me uh, let me breathe a little bit. Oh, I see some essays here. That's nice. Uh, scrolling back. So we got uh, Mikey, Robin, Amy's here. Hello, everyone. I've eaten many frogs today, but no friends. <laughs> That's funny. So Kirsten wrote, has anyone else been saying eat the frog lately uh, because of my live the other day? And then Amy said, oh, I have. I've been... Uh, I've been reminding myself, I've been telling myself to eat the frog and other people. Meaning she's been telling herself and other people, eat the frog, eat the frog, right? But she said, I've been telling myself to eat the frog and other people. So I, you know, I called her on that and we had a good laugh. And Robin's laughing. I ate a good frog yesterday. <laughs> That's partly why I missed. You guys are funny. Uh, behind the red door, I uh, had to do a bank thing. I had put it off. Ah, oh, so you actually ate the frog and did a thing you didn't want to do. That's cool. And Rupert's here. Hello. Working on the business. Working in the business. They're separate but related things. 
Okay. Is that what are we talking about there? I don't know. I'm sorry. Is that I uh, I, I I think it's uh oh oh it's what I said before that I like working on the business and he likes working in the business. Yes. See, this happens to me, uh, Rupert. I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, people comment on things that I say, and then by the time I read your comment, I have no idea what I said or what the heck you're talking about. So uh, sorry about that, but I remembered, which is nice. Uh, Barbara's here. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Um, in preparation for possible upcoming farmers market. Uh, oh, it is up. You know, I was about to say farmers market, but I was like, farmers market? That can't be right. Uh, but it is a farmers market, so I was right. Um, I walked through town today and practiced opening my heart chakra. Oh, that's cool. Uh, not as an invitation, but to stop closing myself off to opportunities, to make connections. Very important for me to practice and smile at people and say hello. I'm totally an introvert. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, by the way, that whole thing about uh, if you're an introvert, just make that your persona. That is not for everybody, right? It's not for everybody to just be that reclusive, mysterious, I don't speak to people. That would be an way over the top um, thing. I think it would be healthier for most introverts to learn how to people a little bit better, to open themselves up. And Barbara, that's a really great way. Uh, so my my number three was to set intentions and then plan for a recovery. Um, but this is how you set intentions right here. If, if, no, if anyone missed it, read that again. Um, she walked through town. Is that, did I get that right? Uh, not as in a, uh, so I walked through town today. Yeah, so she went to where the farmer's market will be. And she walked through town and intentionally opened her heart chakra to get ready for this thing because she's going to have to do something that makes her uncomfortable. Is it dangerous? No. Are people going to stab her? No. Right? Hopefully not. I hope that doesn't happen. But, um, you know, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> I just ruined it for you. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, no, I can't do this now. So... But that's a really wonderful thing. So, I mean, if you can't go to the town, you can go there in your brain, right? You can you can go there in your mind. I have to go to this convention center and, and talk to people, or I have to go to this farmer's market, or I have to go to this gallery, or whatever it is. And you can mentally do it and spiritually prepare for it. So good for you, Barbara, and thank you for that. That's, uh, that's excellent. Rupert says... <sighs> I need to take a breath before I say the next person. Rupert says, I think of myself as an introvert, but I do need some in-person interaction. Yeah, and, and I think the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, uh, most of the time. Well, at least it did for me. I hope it does for you. Mikey says, I am both an introvert and an extrovert, sometimes both at the same time. Uh, depending on the task at hand, I am steeped in duality, maybe because I'm a double Gemini. Maybe. Uh, that is the, 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 yeah, steeped in duality. That's cool. I like that. That's a, that's a cool name for an album, dude. Steeped in duality. Um, Rupert says, the uh, stage is weird, being alone, but not. Yeah, it is weird, right? It's like, um, yeah, being on stage is a strange uh, place because you're not alone and yet you're all alone and all eyes are on you. It's uh, but I, I, I thrive on that. So I don't know if that's introverted or extroverted or what, but it's it's where I it's where I, I live <laughs> and love to be. Um, I like that alone on stage. Bobby, we share a lot of stage persona traits. I'm sure that we do. Um, Rupert says quality of connection versus quantity of people. Yeah, definitely that. Uh, that's me for sure. I don't have a million uh, friends like the guitar player in that band I was talking about. He's one of those guys who like knows everybody, right? He can walk through town. He could walk anywhere. We went to Florida on spring break uh, in college, uh, me and him and a bunch of guys from our fraternity. And, uh, and he was walking down the, the turnpike in Daytona, Florida. And like people that none of us knew, we were all our friends together, right? And people were like, hey, Rob, to this guy, his name was Rob. And like, we couldn't go 20 feet without bumping into somebody that he knew from some other college. And like, he knew all his high school friends still, they all hung out all the time. But this guy had like a million friends, you know? And to me, it's like, I have a lot of, quaint, I have a lot of, 
I have a lot of acquaintances, but I, I, I only have very few, like, really close friends that I, you know, would, would open up my heart to. And, uh, and, and because to me, it's more about the quality of the connection than the number of people. So thanks for that. Rupert. I think Freddie Mercury was an introvert, but on stage he came across as an extrovert. I think a lot of lead singers are like that. It's like on stage, something just clicks in my brain and I'm just like, I open up and it just, I, it, I sing, literally. And, uh, and, then, and then it's over and I don't want to make it sound like that. It's like, you know, oh, go away. I must hide in the darkness. I'm not a vampire or something like that. But um Especially after a show, then I, 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 I like the attention that comes after the show because people will be like, that was great, and I like all of that. But uh, but yeah, if I'm just like going out somewhere, I don't need to be the center of attention. I don't need to be the lead singer if I'm not at my show. You know, does that make sense? Um, you know, the people who need to be the center of attention no matter where they are, they're at like your your birthday party, but it's suddenly about them. Like, that's not me, <laughs> you know? I, I can talk to people at your birthday party, but I don't need anyone to think that I was the life of the party. Um, unless you ask me to sing, then I am literally going to become the life of the party that it's going to happen because you asked me to sing and you shouldn't have done that mikey says i'm always on stage even at home <laughs> uh amy says i'm highly empathic and extreme actually before i read this uh i'm always on stage. so here's here's a quick little story about me right so i'm you know i'm a dad and uh so my daughter is uh is uh, she's going to college soon but when she was younger she was in gymnastics and on a uh, gymnastics uh competitive team so you know all the parents know each other all the parents are you know parents of girls in gymnastics and um and so, you know, I was just Kayla's dad. That was it. Nobody knew me as other, anything other than Kayla's dad. And uh, and then one day, the uh, it, as it turned out, uh, I was friends. I became friends through the gymnastics world with the coach, her, her gymnastics coach. He's uh, he's a guy a little younger than me, but he was a, a guitar player and singer in a rock band. And um, and he he knew that I was in a rock band because I had helped him set up a studio and stuff like that. And, uh, and then one day they were having a, um, uh, a fundraiser for the gym and his band was going to play. So he calls me up and he's like, hey, would you like to do a song with us? Uh, because uh, the, the, he, he knows I'm a singer and he thought it would be fun if I got up on stage and sang a song. I'm like, yeah, sure. So we did Beatles uh, Twist and Shout, right? And which uh, Beatles is like perfect right in my... Uh, that's a perfect song for my voice, you know? So nobody knew that I was going to do this except for me and him and his band. And then halfway through the show, I'm hanging out with all the parents and everything like that. We're all just hanging around having a drink or whatever. And then he calls me up on stage and they're all like, why is Bobby going up on stage? And then they start this song and I start singing and they all went like, what the fuck is this? And they freaked out because they didn't know I was a singer. And... Uh, they never looked at me the same way again. But that's that's what happens. It's like, I won't make myself the front man of your thing, but if you invite me on your stage, I am going to take it over. <laughs> so that's that. Amy says, I'm highly empathic and extremely extroverted in small doses, uh, in carefree, safe environments, and introverted in measured doses, almost to the point of total shutdown from the whole world as I have to recover my energies and make sense of the emotions I've sensed in the course of the day or week. That was a sentence. <laughs> I'm happy to be on my own as it's not a sad on my own. It's a recharging sort of thing. Plus, you need a bit of alone time for the art to formulate. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I, I, I hear you. Um, I don't have like a total shutdown uh, type of thing. However, uh, I could very, very, very easily sequester myself in my studio and like just not even come out. If I didn't have a wife and kids, I wonder sometimes if like I would just have a place that I lived with a studio in it and basically it would just be a big studio with a bed in the corner and occasionally I would go out 
into the world because I remembered that I need sunlight once in a while. Like that could be me. If uh, if uh, you know, this, there there are days where the only reason I've gone out all week was because I had to drive one of my kids somewhere, and it's like, oh, there's an outside I forgot about. So that that can happen to me. Um, but that's how the art flows for me. It's like uh, it, it's like uh, the, I need to I need that alone time for the art to flow. However, um, sometimes if I sequester myself for too long, then I don't have any kind of inspirational intake. And uh, I find that going out and just breaking that pattern can, uh, can be very helpful to me because then I can come back to my little cocoon, my little oasis in, in here, and, uh, and, but, but bring some new energy with me. So yeah, sometimes the energy can get stale if I just stay here by myself. I don't. I can't. I can't think of new stuff. Which is actually a reason I really like running uh, this Facebook group is because there's a constant influx of new ideas, new things. I can say something, and the and the and the comments and everything are just is so refreshing to me it's it's wonderful so i thank you all for that uh, robin says i find that when i start talking i'm not so introverted yeah uh sometimes if you could be an introvert meaning like you're you're not going to um put yourself in a situation but if you find yourself in a situation and now you're talking it's like this isn't so bad i don't know what i was afraid of um so i i'm with you on that uh, ray says robin williams was an introvert uh-huh I think I knew that. I'm not really sure. Uh, Barbara says, I'm all about people leaving me alone. <laughs> I don't like attention yet. I want to be noticed for my art. But I don't. But I do. Yeah, I, I know. I'm with you on that, Barbara. I feel you. Oh, Barb, the life of an empath, says Ray, uh, the artist formerly unknown. Says Rupert and Ray says walking the mall as a dragon walking to the mall walking in the mall or to the whatever doesn't matter you're walking around the mall as a dragon has its perks I'm sure uh, because you're anonymous or uh, I, what what's the what's the inspiration in that comment Barbara says I kind of flourished during this past year I can wear a mask everywhere and sunglasses <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> That's funny. My wife and I went uh, to, uh, we got, I told you we got a car um, last month or earlier. I don't remember when it was. It was a little while ago. We got a car. And the day that we went to pick it up, I went inside. I had my mask on, but I drove there with my sunglasses on. And I went inside and I sat down at the desk with the guy and forgot my sunglasses were on. And my wife was doing something in the car still, so she was coming in a minute later. And then... Um, she came in and sat down next to me and I'm talking with the guy and she comes in, she asks me a question and I look at her and I'm giving her a look and she's like, I, I can't see anything with those sunglasses on. I forgot that I was wearing them and I was like, oh my God, and now I'm apologizing to the guy because I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> he can't see my face the whole time I'm sitting there and I felt really dumb. So uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Again, th there's a story that I don't know how it landed. Oh, there, there's a the, whoever gave me that little laughy face. Thanks, because otherwise I, I'm looking at a, a a dead black circle here that gives me no love. I don't I don't know uh, if it's good, if it's bad, if everyone's going oh, shut up. Uh, don't know. Anyway, walk in the mall, kind of flourish. That's why I like exhibiting my work in gallery shows, gallery spaces, and not in this pandemic online. Uh, not in person anyway. I find that rather cold and impersonal. So you like the gallery. That's why. Why? Why is why? What was the last thing you said? I find that when I start talking, I'm not so introverted. Okay. Yeah. And that's why I like exhibiting my art and gallery shows. So you, you like getting out into the world and being around people. And once you're there and you're talking, you're like, okay, I found my spot. I'm comfortable doing it this way. That's great. Um, boom. Here late. Ha ha. Well, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, thanks for dropping in. And Robin says, gallery shows are fun. Can talk to people about my art or the art of others. It really breaks the ice, and I like it. That's great. That's awesome. And Rupert says, and breathe. I joined five minutes in. And now Rupert's reminding me to breathe. Thank you. And uh, boy, are you ever talking threes today? And there are others. Other days. I'm talking threes. I... I don't know that I'm talking threes. I just, I just open the mouth 
and out come the threes apparently so it's just it's all natural nothing's planned um amy says you don't breathe anyway so i can write long sentences <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Thanks. Uh, yeah, long sentences. I got that. Uh, Barbara says, that's me too with going out. I go out because I have kids. When they're not here, I'm happily puttering around in my bubble. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy to be in my bubble sometimes. And Richard says, we are the fuel for your fire. Yes, absolutely. This, this group is definitely the fuel for my fire. And Richard, you're a little newer to the group, but... Um, uh, some other people who've been here since the very beginning will remember me talking about how, hey, I started a group, I have no idea why, and basically I'm doing Daily Fuel as, uh, as, as, as free therapy. I'm just going to talk and you guys are going to be my therapists. And I figured out a lot of things. And... Um, and, and, and here we are now doing what we're doing. So, uh, and, and, and like I said, that's why the group kind of stayed small for a while. But if you notice, it's, it's, it's expanding now because uh, we got it to a point where it was like, ah, it landed right here. This is, this is the sweet spot for it. And now we're ready for it to grow. But it was kind of floating around. It didn't have a foundation. It was, a, it was like I built a room in a building with no foundation and no windows or curtains or anything like that. It was like it landed. And, uh, and so, yes, we are the fuel for your fire. That's absolutely true. Thanks for, well, not you, but everybody else. And thank you for that. Uh, uh, Ray says, Megan the dragon can do so many things that Ray can't. Walking through the mall, nodding and talking to strangers, and they don't know how strange the person inside the costume is. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I think that's great. And Amy says, uh, it's mutual. We figure things out too. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm very happy for that. Uh, and hopefully you now know, don't eat people and don't literally eat frogs either. Unless, unless you do. I mean, frogs legs. I know people eat them. I don't know if I've ever had frogs legs. That's unusual. I, I would, you would think, I would think that I would have tried it by now, but I have not. I don't think. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of it. Anyway, um, well, that's the last comment, so we're done. Um, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. As usual, I always appreciate it. And uh, Amy, you get the booby prize today, so that's nice. And uh, it tastes like chicken, does it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, I've never had any kind of amphibian or reptile uh, meat. No, I don't think that I have. Uh, Robin, everyone says they taste like chicken. And good night and LOL. Yeah, good night, guys. Thanks very much. I will, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.